Hello, welcome. Um, as some of you may know, I've been having some issues with my D1. And I've got some CAD background, I've got some computer background, and I'm a persistent little prick when it comes to getting answers. <laughs> um, there's a switch that nobody's been telling us about. It's not in any of the files, it's not anywhere. Without the switch, you can't read or write to your motherboard. Without the switch being in the right position, this, if the switch is in the wrong position, it'll also allow your computer or anything else to make changes to the motherboard. Like lasers dropping off, USB ports dropping off, things just, when it's doing weirdness, it's because it's allowing your computer to make changes to the motherboard. It needs to be locked or it needs to be unlocked. It's the same thing as if, if it's in the locked position. Uh, how many people do you know that say their updates are taking forever? That's why, because the motherboard is locked and won't allow the update software to talk to it. Um, there's people that are getting this no sync error. This will fix their problem. Uh, if you're just wanting your fix and get on the road, uh, this is where your, your rotary plugs in. Right here is a reset button. This is the switch right here. Now just for safety's sake, until we know more, until I find out more, don't flip that switch while this machine is running. Go ahead and turn your machine off. If you can, go ahead and pull both your cables for just a minute. We're going to be turning it right back on because we're going to get right back to action here. Um, if you do hear about it, it's either to the right or to the left. Well, is that in the front or is that in the back? Uh, common sense is from this side, but they say it's from that side. So we're going to eliminate that. If the switch is pushed over that way, we'll just call that to the reset. If this switch is pushed, switched over to this side, we'll call it to the rotary. So, I'm willing to bet from the pictures I've seen, I've seen one person that actually got a motherboard sent to him. And I saw in this video a shot similar to this. And this switch was over to the rotary side, which is open, allowing signals from the computer to make changes to the motherboard which I mean it could be anything from the laser quitting to um, the laser just doing a hula dance uh, mine would home and crash into the corner uh, lately it just quit get halfway done and it would just quit moving but the head would keep going back and forth and it just cut a line through my stuff um, this will fix it so if you just want to grab and go, what you're wanting to do is turn your machine off, make sure this thing is pointed, the switch is over to the rotary. Do your update. You're going to have, it's over here, turn this on, you're going to turn this back on. Do your update. Uh, when you're finished your update, turn it off. Go ahead and flip the switch. Just flip it over that way, flip it to the reset, plug it back up, and you should be golden. You shouldn't have any problem. It should take out. You should be. It shouldn't stop. It shouldn't have any problems. You might have to do it. My mind, I had to do it once. I had to do it twice. And they quit midstream on one cut. Well, I've, re I've redone it again. But in fairness, the first time I did it, I had already made three or four cuts before I learned about the switch. Mine was still, mine has always lived pushed towards the rotary. It was always open to getting weird signals from the computer and it doing stuff. So right now it has its first clean locked install in it and I haven't had any problems since. Now. Uh, 
I guess they're gone. They've got their stuff. They're gone. <laughs> so, for us, make sure your your switch is over towards the rotary. Put both your cables in and turn it back on. It's got to be on to do the update. Now you're going to get to watch this computer while I go over here. It don't take but a minute from here. You get to watch this computer. Maybe. Let me look. And we might want to start spreading the word, I guess, about this, because you see that button, how close it is to that rotary connector. It would be so easy to bump that, just trying to get the rotary plug in and out. It just always, when it's working, it always needs to be to the reset. Anytime you look at it, it should be pointed to the reset. Pointed to the reset to be locked. Now. Where are you getting your updates from and stuff? I don't care. Don't go there. Get them from support.xtool.com. Don't use any links that you got or whatever. Just go to their go to the main their main support page. Get the get your stuff straight from them. I've had bad links. I've had I've landed on bad pages with, you know, with out of date information, following the wrong thing. Click on X to, or your D1. Scroll down here a little bit. Uh, how to upgrade D1 firmware. Now for Laserbox people, you got it easy. Just click on your menu button. Click firmware. You're done. Um, when you are done, you want to turn, after it's done, turn the machine off. If you can, pull your power cords and stuff, just let it sit there a minute. Flip that switch, point it to the reset, move it over towards the reset button. Put your cables back in, you should be good to go. I want to hear from you if you get yours going. Now, for the rest of us sufferers, uh, this is, we can want to use this one here. Just click on download the firmware update tool. Don't even worry about none of this crap. Go up here and hit this download button. It'll take you to another page. Maybe. Now, I've made a folder in my temp directory. I made it, you know, I got a place I know where it's at. You're going to have to go through File Explorer and open up the folder. So you need to save this file somewhere where you can get to it. Uh, that's number three. We'll go ahead and save it. That's how many times I've been through this. Now, right here, I'm going to bring this back down. Down in the bottom corner, this is the file. Now when you click on this, if you don't have a uh, a special unzipping program it will prompt you to install it might prompt you to install something you need a program to unzip this file and it'll unzip everything in this file and it'll put it in that directory where you just saved this file to it makes sense when you do it now just all you want to do is hit extract you saw the little thing, it extracted them, they're done. That's it. You're done. We're done with this. I'm going to move this down a little bit. We're getting ready to go. Go to your folder. Go to my computer, wherever your folder is. Swing to your folder. Mine is D1. That's the same folder here. Then since I've tried it three times, mine is in number three folder. This here matches what's on that thing. 
All you gotta do is double click on the flash download. This little box pops up. And that's why we're gonna move this down here just a little bit. This says we want to pick ESP32. ESP32. Dev. UART. And I guess we're hitting OK. OK. Now, you, there's a video up there. You can watch it if you want. But we need to select these in order. Don't worry about it. We'll show you. These dots right here that's where you pick the top one here just click the three dots next to it you'll pick the firmware double click on it the next one here you double click on that bootloader third one click on the dots get the partitions that's all that you're done come down to here now you have to select your com port mine is com8 you need to know what your com port is if you don't Start your program with the D1 on and it'll automatically tell you write it down and you can just walk right back through these steps and do this again. It's COM8. It's idle. Go ahead and hit start. I'm not. I've already done mine. Um, it'll run some number. You'll see some stuff go. This will say it's syncing and, and it'll download some files. It'll just sit here and this will change from idle. It'll go, it'll say finish. When it says finish, it's done. You can close that out. You can get out of all this stuff. You're done. Uh, what you want to do now is just turn your machine off. Go ahead and flip the switch over towards. The reset button let it sit for a minute turn it over to the reset hook it back up if you took the cords out hook it back up turn it on let it run for a minute or two then I would turn it off just me you can leave it going but if you turn it off let it sit Go ahead and start your program, your your light burn or whatever. Go ahead and start it. Let it get running first. Then turn your D1 on. Pick your port out in your software. Pick your port. Pick your machine out at once it finds it. And then frame you out a test piece and see if it don't work. After that, you can start it the way you used to. Start your D1 first and start your program. But for this, just do that. I'd be real interested in knowing if this helps and how many of you it fixes. Um, keep an eye on that button and make sure it's pushed to the reset. I would anybody you talk to, I would get them to check theirs because if it's if it's to the rotary, they're gonna be looking for trouble. Um, People asking about what computers are best to use with these. Probably an old one. It'd be more compatible and you'd have less trouble because the, the, the cards and stuff would be more compatible with this machine in the long run. You would have less trouble on an old machine. Lightburn, neither Lightburn or the Laserbox or use very many resources at all. Buy yourself a nice computer to, to design on and do your work on. Share a hard drive or network them together and do it that way. Get you an old machine to run one of these and you will be so much happier. Let me know if this helps. I'd love to hear from you. Man, welcome back if this fixes you.